Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Today's show is absolutely unique because oftentimes we talk about finances, but we usually talk about things like your retirement account, how to plan for the future, what even to do for curbing your spending now to make things better for you. But something unique is on the horizon today because we're going to talk with someone who is very knowledgeable on something that is really, oh gosh, the wave, the wave of the future, and it's actually here. Many of you have heard of Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and other things that sort of bring to mind internet currency, or e-currency, or well, however you want to call it. But we have an expert here today with us who has become hooked after investing and double valuing in just a few months some of his own finances. And he studied cryptocurrency for over two years and has become an in-house expert with what he's doing, anything that's crypto related. And we'll even talk to him to define what really is meant by crypto and uh, it's not catacombs either. So adamantly, he has had just developed a huge dynamic background in what he is doing with this and where it's going. And he believes in the future of what's called blockchain technology. And we'll also find out a little bit more about what's that and what kind of implications that it may hold, especially when it comes to financial markets. So we're going to sort of bring that back to the table too, because all of this does relate to what's going on with money or currency that is in your hands. And so we really want to get into all of the things that's going on within this and talk to somebody who is a cryptocurrency analyst analyst and trader at Simpler Trading. So with me today is Taylor Letterman. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I am just absolutely delighted to have you because you're an expert in what you do. And I want to talk to you first, not just in how you got involved in this, but I want to set the definitions out for anyone who's first tuning in and going, what does crypto mean? What is blockchain technology? What does all of this mean? So we can lay a foundation of where we're going and move forward in that direction. So maybe you could share a little bit of light about what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so cryptocurrencies are just going to be easier to classify them just as digital cash. So many of them function in different ways, whether it's transactional based between two individuals, trading value of some sort, like you would with Bitcoin. Um, many people have heard of Bitcoin. It's the top uh, crypto out there, uh, widely heard of. Everyone's kind of seen the news or at least has a friend that's bought some, um, either made money or lost money on it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Bitcoin is the prominent cryptocurrency that we talk about and trade. Uh, uh, and then we have everything else within the crypto market is called an altcoin. So altcoin is an alternative to Bitcoin. So that makes up everything else that we talk about. in the crypto. Okay. Market. So it's kind of those two main differentiating is Bitcoin is the main one. Um, everything else tends to be domin denominated by Bitcoin. And Bitcoin makes up over 60%, um, around 60% of the entire market for cryptocurrency. So the value of Bitcoin is a majority of the crypto market. Uh, and then you have a bunch of altcoins, like I mentioned. And most of these are startups or smaller companies attempting to create, disrupt some industry, some aspect of whether it be financial or how we manage our data, how we manage logistics, and kind of distributing that data set as well as what's occurring on many of these networks or ledgers. Uh, and that's what really cryptocurrencies, blockchains, distributed ledgers are all kind of wound around this idea of a blockchain, which is just a um, tamper-proof distributed ledger that um, essentially is making its way into more public um, use cases and enterprise use cases as well to make data transparent. Distributed. And I'm just so access just different crunch. ideas that are very well organized. If you scroll up. Um, and so that allows us to continue to, one, grow a lot of these cryptocurrencies to um, 
have strong use cases, but also really impact people um, and disrupt some industry that we see now, such as the financial industry where banks kind of control and own everything we're doing. Uh, and so pulling that back into sort of the public hands and owning your own data, owning your own currency, owning your own um, kind of well being. Uh, so the idea of cryptocurrency is just revolutionizing that. And we're still very early in adoption. Well, this is really an amazing topic to have because those who are baby boomer, boomers, Generation X, talking about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has always been sort of um, feared in the sense that what's going on online, I can't see it. It's not tangible. Is this legitimate? Am I going to lose money on this? And there has been actually skepticism because there has been people speaking about how they've lost or they've been scammed out of Bitcoin and things like that. So this is really refreshing to talk about. And then, then on the other side of the coin, you have a generation that's coming up in a cashless society. And this is something that would be considered somewhat of the norm, if you will. And so this is a, a really neat topic to have because we're moving in this direction and this is what's happening. So you yourself came on board to this in 2016 and doubled your money in a really short period of time. How did this happen? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a nerd at heart. So I spent a lot of time on the internet and I was working as a web developer. Uh, so naturally kind of curious about new technologies and um, what everyone's talking about online and found myself one day jumping down a rabbit hole of what are cryptocurrencies, what is Bitcoin, how do I become a part of it, what is the future implications of it, um, and ended up getting wound up in all the circulation around cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin back in 2016, uh, and finally decided to put my money where my mouth is and start investing, um, and then of course 2017, starting in the beginning of 2017, um, a year before the big bull run that uh, we witnessed within the crypto market, where Bitcoin reached up and attained $20,000. So I was investing early um, during that year, learning about it, kind of um, optimizing my process and systems around investing in the cryptocurrency space. And uh, just kind of was the right place, right time, as luck would have it, but also just kind of that curiosity about new technology kind of pushed me into that space. And uh, just very happy to, to time it like that and got really lucky. But nonetheless, uh, we had the bull run in 2017 where Bitcoin like I said, attained almost a $20,000 price tag on it. Uh, and then over the past 18 months later, we're now circling back and Bitcoin's again making bigger moves. Uh, so it's been sort of a roller coaster of emotions or trading and interesting things occurring in the space and growth uh, that I've been able to witness throughout that. And so kind of looking back on where I started with no real knowledge and an understanding of technology and how the internet and uh, different networks work. Uh, kind of allowed me to kind of leapfrog into the space without all the kind of frustrations that many new people have with Bitcoin is just understanding how it works and trying to understand these new technical terms that they've never heard of before. Um, but I just was lucky to have sort of an under space understanding of that before I jumped into it, which made it more interesting and a faster kind of learning curve for myself. This is really neat. So boom, there you have it. And here you are, you've become an expert because you have immersed yourself in all of the intricacies of how this works. So with where you are at now, and if I came to you and I said, okay, Taylor, tell me what I need to do because I want to invest in this. And here's my biggest question. Well, it's kind of, kind of a multi question, but do I invest my money now in a 401k, a CD, or do I go to this cryptocurrency and start investing through Bitcoins? Is that how this works? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So, I mean, there's different, different approaches to investing and it depends on sort of your risk appetite. Of course, I am not a financial advisor. Uh, I simply... I uh, try to help people understand what cryptocurrencies is and kind of point them in the right direction to get started. Uh, so my um, take on sort of like myself uh, entering into this space, I definitely timed it correct, was lucky in how I timed it. Um, but now my kind of outlook on cryptocurrency, is it's still growing, um, but we're wanting to be more specific in how we invest into it, right? Um, many people I've heard of 
a term called dollar cost averaging. So that's how I tend to kind of explain what dollar cost averaging is and using that approach to invest in cryptocurrency. So first we want to determine what is our risk appetite. So do we want to put a large sum into cryptocurrencies knowing that we could potentially lose all of that um, simply because it's a highly speculative um, asset to be investing in uh, the adoption. We're still early in the growth of cryptocurrency. So with trying to be um, make a huge gain or, return on your investment, um, there's also a lot of risk associated with that because okay. cryptocurrencies could disappear tomorrow. Some governments can ban them, begin to regulate. Okay. Uh, okay. So there's a lot that can really impact the crypto market. And so dollar cost averaging will allow, what that means is over time, you're trying to average in at a lower price. So if you invest $10 today, $10 uh, next Friday, $10 the Friday after that, and just at the end of every week, you're investing 10 bucks or whatever the case may be, $1,000 a month. Um, so you're averaging in over time. So you're okay. not necessarily worried about the big swings in price. Bitcoin can move a thousand dollars in a day. So go from 9,000 to 10,000 in a day or matters of minutes, uh, just because okay. there's a lot of volatility associated with it. Let me just jump in right here because one of the questions that's coming to my mind is, is this something then that I can monitor like the New York stock exchange where I will be able to see what's going on? up and down as it's fluctuating and I know how to pull my money out when it's the time's right. And then I can just reinvest a little bit and sort of keep some of the, the fruit of that. Is that. Yeah, to totally. So, I mean, okay. uh, at the, at the point between where you're trying to like monitor Bitcoin and be on top of it day to day, uh, you're kind of taking a more of a trader mentality. So your psychology begins to impact, uh, how you're handling your new, your new investment in this very speculative, volatile asset. And so if you're watching Bitcoin every day and you see these large swings, um, you may be wanting to be, become fearful and wanted to pull your money out. Or maybe you get a little bit greedy and like, oh, it's going to go a little higher. I'm going to hold it a little bit longer. And then price drops. So um, by kind of setting in forgetting, you know, it's a common term when we're talking about investing or a longer term investing, especially in something that's volatile like Bitcoin. Uh, it's kind of taking the approach of like just slowly inserting yourself into the space, becoming more aware of it. And so normally with people entering into cryptocurrencies, it's always good to be educated on what you're investing in, where you're putting your money, be knowledgeable of that and kind of own it yourself. Uh, and that's sort of one of the bigger selling points about cryptocurrency. And so if you're a long-term believer that cryptocurrencies can step in and actually take a larger part in our day-to-day -day lives and the adoption of that will continue to increase, knowing there's a limited supply of some of these cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Uh, so as demand begins to increase and supply is capped, uh, so the valuation of that will continue to go up higher as more people use it in the network around Bitcoin continues to grow. That and makes a lot of sense. So I, I like the longer term outlook on cryptocurrency, especially for an average or retail investor. Someone get new into the space is kind of setting like a one, two year period of your expectation on the price of Bitcoin. So if you start now, don't really worry about what's happening between now and the next year and just have those every now and then check in on it the same way you would on your 401k. Uh, okay. Simply because you need to get in new and begin flipping Bitcoin. So buying, trying to buy it low and sell it high, it's quite difficult. And until you become more acquainted with the market and the dynamics in Bitcoin and some of these other cryptocurrencies, uh, you end up losing and then become demotivated to continue to invest and learn about the space. Well, that makes sense. I mean, you're not motivated to do something. And it's, it's always kind of like when there's pain associated with something, you stay away from it. And that can really be applicable to money, too, because it, when it's painful in the wallet, it, it, we, we, won't, we, won't do, we won't take the risk. So I'm wondering a couple of things. And one of them is, is this recognized through IMF and... Um, or is it going that way? I mean, I, I think uh, I, I think that we're still progressing. Some of the exchanges are well insured, and um, there's protection associated with some of these. But the government um, is still the IRS views it as a certain type of income. Uh, SEC views it differently. The CTFC, okay. everyone okay. kind of has a different view on how cryptocurrencies what they are. Uh, whether we're taxed on the capital gains or is it more like a property are are we trading and every transaction is taxed so and then the ctfc sees some of them as securities some as not securities and the same thing with sec is trying to regulate some of these new exchanges that are coming on board and who where people are investing and putting their money in 
Uh, so there's still a lot of sort of flexibility in terms of how the government's one kind of going after um, bad actors in the crypto market, but also how they're treating the good actors. And so it's, it's, there's always bad apples in any market uh, yeah. with any investment or anything you're trying to learn about that's new and exciting. There's going to be people trying to take advantage of people that don't know enough. And so it's always important to find some sort of outlet for that strong, the educating yourself on the space and then allowing sort of the rest of the market kind of to mature, but no, learning with the market and growing with the market or growing with some of these assets that could potentially become widely adopted and heavily used. Well, you just answered some of my questions and it really pertained to income taxes because uh, the question would be, does, is this you know just like uh, receiving the end of the year statement and how does this get it, is it applied? But th this makes a lot of sense now. Now, another question I have has to do with Libra coin. And what mm -hmm. does that mean? This is, this is a, the, one of the newest, more exciting, and kind of like entries or variables into the crypto space that everyone really still hasn't got a strong handle on simply because Libra Libra token is Facebook's Facebook pushed out this new token that they'll be launching uh, in next year. Okay. Uh, they sort of wrangled up this consortium of private and public companies, um, even now reaching out to governments such as the government of Thailand. Um, so each of these entities within this association of 27, 28 companies right now, uh, such as Spotify, Lyft, Uber, uh, PayPal, American okay. Express, Visa, like big names in this group of people or group of uh, companies in this association, all own a stake of Libra token essentially. So they're, they've all invested around $10 million to become what we call a node. So in a network, you have little nodes that kind of share information between each other and maintain a ledger such as Bitcoin. And so in this case, PayPal, Visa, they all are going to kind of be able to see these transactions occurring on this network. So if, if you have Libra token and I have a, and you want to pay me in Libra token, you send it to me. Uh, and then now my balance changes and then I send it to somebody else. So these companies will be able to see the transactions occurring. Uh, the government is stepping in right now currently and kind of like trying to stop them from continued progress because it's direct competition with central banks and governments. Okay. Uh, so there's a, okay. it's, it's very, we're at a tipping point coming up over the next call it 12 to 18 months of seeing a real dynamic shift in how people one view money yes. because money is whatever we view the dollar is simply like our psych up. What, what you think, what I believe, um, if you believe a dollar is worth a dollar and I'm like a dollar is only worth 50 cents to me, then we have a disconnect. And so as that disconnect continues to grow in terms of where the dollar gets its value, the U.S. dollar or the euro, and as some of these countries begin to evolve and kind of seek out digital currencies, China is now creating their own currency, digital currency to compete with Libra. And so this, this whole mix up and this global oh. race to create these digital currencies is now occurring. Um, some governments will stifle innovation or stifle to push this because they don't know what's going to happen. Nobody really knows what the outcome of all this competition and push into the digital currency space, will, how that will impact local economies, governments, and so on. And so it's really shaking up the financial industry. And by shaking up that industry, they're shaking all the other trees um, that creates some sort of um, mix in how we view money. And so right now, with Libra token, it's simply going to be pegged to a dollar or, and that dollar is a basket of currencies that they'll hold. Uh, okay. These are fiat currencies and be such as the British pound, the Euro, the dollar, a mixture of those. So they maintain a fixed price to maintain a backing to the Libra token. So Libra token is still going to be backed by fiat currencies, but it lack is its own, its own digital currency that you can transact globally. You can send it to whoever you want to. Um, so it really is going to be impactful for those that are unbanked or have a local currency that's devalued, such as Venezuela. Uh, so it's going to be helpful for those communities, those countries to then be able to transact without having to rely on their government currency. Yes. Uh, you know, if the, if the currency is destabled, uh, the price of it obviously drops the value in it. People no longer believe it's worth this much. It's now worth this much where this previously could buy you a down payment on a house you can now just get you a cup of coffee. And yes. so with Libra token, it's going to kind of expand this new reach of a currency to everyone that uh, is to transact digitally without having a bank or anybody step in place. 
it makes me wonder with everything that you were talking about, how this impacts the revaluation of money in different countries, because mm-hmm. you're talking about direct competition in the governments of each different country's eyes. And so this is, this is really interesting because economically this is going to, as it continues to emerge, have, like you said, a huge impact. So now is a really good time for people to start learning about it, start becoming involved because eventually it really will become what is the currency. I mean, we're going cashless. Right. This is, this is really it. So if somebody's wanting to get involved in this, I've got two questions. One, what would be a minimum amount of money to begin investing so that they feel safe enough to start getting into this and getting knowledgeable? And the second question is, then do I go to a specific website to start purchasing using these different coins or tokens and learning about nodes? Sure. Yeah. And so what there's, I mean, a couple ways to answer this, but I'll start with sort of the more complicated, the like where people are fearful for entering this space is lack of understanding. So uh, normally if you're wanting to learn something new or kind of push yourself to kind of attempt to get into a new investment or anything like that, you having some skin in the game uh, will kind of motivate you to continue to learn, track, understand what's occurring in the space. And so opening you up to more information occurring as well as kind of allowing you to see sort of the inner workings, have a better understanding. So when you see people talking about this, you have friends discussing it and interested in it, or we see some big overhaul in our understanding of how money and digital cash operates, you've already kind of done the groundwork and have a solid understanding of it. So it's important to, I think, whatever, putting skin in the game, whatever that number is for you, uh, investing, uh, going to Coinbase. Coinbase Coinbase.com is one of the bigger uh, exchanges here in the United States. Um, It's FDIC insured. uh, So you can put money in, you can deposit on a recurring basis from your connected to your bank account, debit card, and easily deposit and buy Bitcoin with that. And so I normally recommend people start there. Uh, they have a wallet or phone, an app you can use on your phone to make it really easy oh, wow. uh, to transact. And you don't have to worry about storing your cryptocurrencies or ha- moving them around or anything, which is one of the complications people have early on is figuring out how to transfer Bitcoin from here to there. Uh, but owning the Bitcoin first and getting into the game is obviously the first step, right? And then you can start to kind of educate yourself on the inner workings of Bitcoin. Uh, I think those are important to have a base understanding on, but it's not something you have to like wholeheartedly understand at the moment. I think over time, a lot of the stuff and concerns we have around the cryptocurrencies and trying to have like a stronger understanding of that, like many people don't know how, what the dollar is back to. Everyone thinks it's backed by gold, but um, obviously that's been proven wrong with our gold reserves and how many dollars are actually right. in circulation. And so you still trust the dollar despite not necessarily having a strong understanding of why we think a dollar is worth a dollar and will always be worth a dollar. Whereas the price of like a peso or euro change week to week, day to day, where the dollar is always feels like it's equal to a dollar. And of course, inflation, these other aspects of valuing a currency come into play. The same thing happens with Bitcoin. And I say, I kind of keep that to the side when educating somebody newly about Bitcoin, it's really just kind of get the motivated understanding of like the implications that can, if we do begin to move over to more digital cash and how these other governments and entities will kind of view it and how we can transact and will enable us both as an individual to kind of function as more sovereignly without having a government kind of controlling our funds or finances or a bank stepping in Uh, because what we see with cryptocurrencies is it's a trustless organization uh, simply because of the mechanics behind Bitcoin and allow us to not have to trust the other person. Right. And so um, it's, it's distributed. It's a network of companies or network individual nodes, people acting on the network. And so first step, skin in the game. So investing a small amount, uh, you can, Bitcoin is denominal by eight zeros. So many people have a misunderstanding that when you invest in Bitcoin, you have to buy a whole Bitcoin and Bitcoin's priced right around uh, just shy of 12000 or $11,500 right now. So you don't have to invest $11,500 to buy a Bitcoin right now. You can invest two bucks and still own a piece of Bitcoin because it can be broken down to the eighth decimal point. Oh, uh, wow. So it can be quite very, very small transactions um, down to less of a penny. Uh, so you can buy very small amounts of Bitcoin over time, like I said, and kind of begin setting up sort of an investment process or savings into Bitcoin and keeping that allocation um, depending on 
your expectation in the market, uh, because it is risky, uh, 10% to maybe even down to 5% at max of your investable income should be derived to, from cryptocurrencies or into cryptocurrencies. Uh, so keeping a, a small allocation of your portfolio um, is probably the safest route simply because there's a risk and it's highly volatile. Um, and as you learn more, maybe you want to have more of a lottery or, or more of a um, risk on appetite for cryptocurrencies. And so investing more, uh, I myself, I feel like there's plenty of opportunity in the space to continue to grow and see more adoption occurring. And so I'm kind of pushing a little heavier into cryptocurrencies because I see sort of the writing on the wall and that the expectation that we could see Bitcoin easily attain back the $20, $20,000 level over the next year or two. Okay. And so taking an understanding of how the market's moving and I've been able to acquire that over investing in cryptocurrency for two years, but I started very small in my investments and then picked that up as I became more um, confident and both in my knowledge of cryptocurrencies and how the market was moving and then just learning and um, organizing my thoughts around cryptocurrencies and positive aspect. Well, this is really good. So if I wanted to get involved in cryptocurrency, do I contact you and have you give me a kind of a plan of attack on what I need to do? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, there's no, from what we do here at Simpler Trading, we, we talk, talk with people more on an intermediate kind of level about what we're trading and what we're doing within the crypto market. So um, and some of that is short to midterm, um, long-term investing in Bitcoin is relatively straightforward. Like I said, you go to Coinbase, which is going to be the number one exchange in the U.S. You can do some research on some of the other exchanges. Uh, Gemini Exchange is a strong one as well, um, owned by the Weekly Boss uh, Twins. That everyone knows them from kind of like the Facebook thing. Uh, but they're heavily invested in then growing this exchange. And I actually use that one and Coinbase together uh, to continue to long-term invest through those different accounts into the crypto market. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions or concerns about investing in crypto and you kind of will, want some help and answer those questions and need some reassurance before you enter the market, uh, feel free to email me, Taylor at Simpler Trading. Um, totally fine. I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Well, excellent. We definitely want to direct uh, the audience to get in contact with you because I think you are absolutely knowledgeable in this. I think this is a great opportunity for um, those who are watching and those who are listening to take a moment to reflect on what is happening with the economy because we are ready for a change. Whether it's slow like the frog in the boiling pot, it's going to happen. And so we either need to prepare now for it or, well, it can just sort of hit us when, you know, we have to change all of a sudden. And I think it's really good to start making educated changes along the way because when you're moving with things and you can end up in being ahead of the game, it's even a lot more valuable to you and it's less stressful and you get excited and motivated about things. And then of course, um, good things happen because when you're excited and you're motivated and things are changing and you're acquiring things um, other things, ha it has a really good ripple effect um, in all areas of your life. So I'm really glad that you had an opportunity uh, to take some time out of your day to share this with the audience. I really want to thank you very much for being here today. And I'm really, I'm just so delighted that you shared this information because I don't think anyone has explained it to me as well as you have. And I haven't had anyone on the show that has really given this the attention and the importance behind what is happening as you have. So thank you so much, Taylor. Thank you. I appreciate it. I enjoyed my time. On. And I definitely want to have you back because there's a lot going on in the market and we want to stay abreast with this. And I, I really want your expertise on this. You are just uh, now my go-to man and you'll be my expert guest, my guest expert for the show for future things. This is absolutely phenomenal. I am so excited. So again, thank you. Thank you. I'd love to be back. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. As you know, I always try to provide some kind of re resource or motivation to get your life healthier and happier. And if it's not directly 
it, something that you can use today that something that your friends, colleagues, or somebody that you know or even don't know on social media. So make sure to get this information out there because this is the wave and we need to write it. So get that surfboard out and that's your dollar bills. Write it. Tune in to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. We broadcast every Wednesday at 12 noon and we are on a ton of platforms now. So again, share that. And this was Taylor Letterman with Simpler Trading. We're excited to have him and thank you for watching. Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Do I have a guest today for you? Because she has an absolutely phenomenal background. I am really excited because she has a background. Well, her degree is in broadcast communications. She has worked in the newsrooms of CNN, Fox, CTV, and ABC7. In fact, she has got such a background. I want to share her knowledge with you because She's past president also of American Women in Radio and Television. She has been a cert certified personal coach through Coach Training um, Institute in San Rafael. What a prestigious area that is in California. And she took that coaching to television. And this is where there were some things that she found were such such a, a shift changer, a life changer that really sculpts where we're going to go with you today and what she can offer to change your life. We'll talk a little bit about what she did with her theme on dream coaching show, where for 90 days, she followed six people and there was some things that she learned from that. She's currently the, the co-CEO and co-founder of Real Wealth Network based in Walnut Creek, California, another prestigious area, gorgeous area. I love, I, I would just love to just talk about the area alone on the show today, but she has <laughs> so much just with that background that she has. Her organization is dedicated to helping members get the most out of cutting edge education and information needed in what? Well, real estate investing. And so she's a licensed real estate realtor, former mortgage broker, and an active real estate investor. I would like to bring her on the show because there's a lot to talk about that you need to know. Kathy Fetke, welcome to the show. Thank you. I am really excited because you have honed in on something that a lot of people really don't talk about that. And to the degree of your knowledge and the background that you have. But I've got to first ask you, how did you get involved in doing what you are doing now? Completely by accident. Um, I, I mean, I think everybody wants to be wealthy, right? And most people understand that, that wealthy people own real estate. So it's, it's not a new concept by any means. HGTV is full of uh, ways that people can flip houses and make money and so forth. And I think most of us know somebody who made money from real estate. And so it, again, it's not a new concept, something I always wanted to do, I had no idea how. I, I remember a friend bought a house once and I thought, you know, how'd you do it? And wh what does all that mean? And um, so it's, it's amazing how little people know about real estate, even though most people would love to have it. Uh, so with that, um, it was probably... 2002, I believe it was, um, my husband was, uh, he had written a book called Extreme Success. He was an international business coach, doing really well. I was a stay-at-home home mom. I gave up my uh, broadcast career to be home with the kids, very traditional kind of family situation. And then um, it turns out he had a freckle on his forehead, went to check it out. He's a redhead with lots of freckles. I don't know how he knew this one needed to be checked, but he, he did. And it turned out it was melanoma. After further testing, the doctor told him it had likely spread and metastasized and that he might have six months to live at most. So life came to a screeching halt in that moment. You know, we felt like we had it all. We just bought it, our first house 
Uh, we had two young kids. I was a stay at home mom, white, white picket fence. I mean, all, you know, at the dream. And it's amazing how life can have its ups and downs. It's, and, and we have to be able to handle that. Right. Yes. So I refused to believe the doctor and my husband is a big, strong, brawny, uh, yeah, boy, he's a, a, a hella skier and a rock climber and a surfer. So I was like, no, 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 no. It, this is not how it ends with a freckle. <laughs> so I'm like, he's going to be okay. Yeah. But I need to take over the finances. So I had my radio show at the time before podcasting. I was on a San Francisco radio station that was my side gig just to get me out of the house uh, from being a stay at home mom. I would do it every Saturday. Didn't make any money at it. But all of a sudden I thought, all right, well, this is something I do understand. Maybe I can monetize it. So I just started dialing for dollars, looking for sponsors for my show to bring in money so that Rich could stay home and, and do anything that he would wanted to do. If indeed the doctor was right, enjoy the last six months. But it was more like, hey, just get better. And, um, and then I just started interviewing people on my show who, who uh, had built wealth. Uh, quickly and in a passive way because I wanted to stay home with the kids. So I needed to be able to have income that was passive so I could still be a mom. So again, I called and tried to get sponsors to get immediate money. And then I was also interviewing people who had done what I want to do. Well, one of the sponsors turned out to be a mortgage broker and I started to do segments with him to understand mortgages, which to me was the most boring thing in the world. But what I learned was that in real estate, you actually don't have to be wealthy. You just need to understand the power of OPM, you, using other people's money to get wealthy. And that's, that was the gift of, of all of this. Rich is healthy today. The doctor was wrong. He overcame it. He's my, my co-CEO. But what we learned from that process is you don't have to wait. You, you, you don't have to wait to buy real estate. You buy real estate and wait because that's the key. You use other people's money to acquire it and then you get all the profit and the cash flow. I love it. I absolutely love it. And so I'm sure that people who are listening are saying, okay, well, how do I use other people's money? What, how do you figure that out? <laughs> you know, do so I that, to that? You know the, the minute you learn that, is when life changes. And, and I can tell you today that the wealthiest of the wealthy, even if they have the money, they still use other people's money. Those That's Trump true. hotels that you see everywhere, that was not his money. That was investor money that he was able to pool. Mm -hmm. I'm working with uh, uh, actors, famous actors in LA who just don't, you know, don't understand this either. And, and it's like, look, you have a following. You can, you know, people will invest in you if you know what you're doing. So, uh, so how do you get other people's money? There's a lot of ways. I mean, the most traditional way is to go into a bank. If you went into a bank to try to get financing for a really great business idea, it's going to be tough. But if you go into a bank to get financing for a real estate, for, for a property, pretty easy. If you have good credit, if you have a, a two-year job history, and if the numbers work on the property, if you find a good, good deal and you you have those things in place and some reserves, cash reserves, the, the bank will give you a good lender, um, not just not your local bank, but actually a mortgage broker, uh, can give you up to 10 conventional loans for investment property. And people don't know this. And they're okay. backed by the U.S. government. Fannie I'm, Freddie loans. I am sitting here in shock because traditionally speaking, there is this assumption that you can only have one loan. I know. That, and that's it. That, that's like when I educate people, I love to see the shock because this is basic information that most people don't know, but a bank is happy to do it. Why would a bank be happy to give you 10 loans when just 10 years ago, we had a horrible housing crisis and yes. why would they continue to do that? And I'm talking about interest rates under 5%. Um, and, and, for, and you would this, only have to put 20% like down. They're putting up the rest. Why? Wow. Why? Because it because they understand it's a hard asset. It increases with inflation. Uh, there's a limited supply of housing right now, so it's a it's a hot commodity, and it's a game yeah. changer for people to understand that if they if they can find the right property and they do exist in the right markets, the markets where the jobs are going or the population is going, but the prices are still 
in the affordable affordable range, like let's say Orlando or uh, Houston or Detroit, yes, yes. Cleveland, some of these areas that are reinventing themselves and where home prices are low but rents are high, it's it's really not difficult to get those 10 loans. And then all of a sudden you have a million dollar portfolio. If you buy 10, $100,000 homes that cash flow, so all of the expenses cover cover the cost, you've got a million dollar portfolio that if you do it right, you could have that paid off in about 12 to 15 years. That is almost, I'm sitting here thinking how insane that is, but it's reality. Mm -hmm. This is so doable if you just do it right. And it's just starting out with going and doing, just doing the one two year. I mean, this is so simplified, some cash reserve two year work history and good credit. I mean, three simple things. And so even if, and you can improve all of that, you you can, you can, if you have bad credit, you can get it fixed. I mean, I I had had to do short sale. Yeah. It's amazing that we had to do a short sale in uh, 2009, and our, it sh- ruined our credit, along with millions of other Americans. Well, there's credit repair programs that know how to fix your credit for a couple thousand dollars. We have perfect credit now, ten years ten years later. But just in a couple, just in one year, they fixed it. Yes, I was. So just, there, there's don't don't. But, yeah, it's so quick. You, you can't. Things, but, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'm happy yeah. about this. Sorry. You no, know, it's just it's exciting because. This is so doable and people, I know that there, we live in this immediate world, you know, everything is ATM and fast food and digital this and digital that. And so we want, but in reality, a very small part of life, six months or a year, you can fix your credit and you can establish this and begin to actually see wealth within 12 to 24 months, your life begins to change. I mean, you, it's just, it is that quick mm-hmm. with the simple method and you have created a, a, just a, a way to help people. And so I want you to talk a little bit about that so that the audience can connect with you. My goal is to provide resources to those that are listening and those that are watching the show so that they can go out and make life changes that make their life better. And you have this and I want to give them the key to unlock the wealth. That, that, I mean, that is it, unlocking the wealth. And, and what's required for that is simply education. You can't see a deal if you don't understand it. it, it I can't tell you how many people would just say, oh, she, you know, she's crazy, and then stop there, mm-hmm. as opposed to looking a little bit further there's there's no risk to getting educated there's no risk to learning more and that's that's the sad thing that so often it's just nope you know people lost money 10 years ago not doing that um versus hmm did did everybody lose money in, in fact in 2006 i was so lucky that I had created this radio show and I was learning and my mind was blown. <laughs> just like, just like you, I was like, you gotta be kidding. I can do this. So Rich and I refied our house. We went and bought five homes in Texas. Why? Because Robert Kiyosaki was on my show and he said, you know, California is in a bubble, but you can sell your property there at the top dollar and buy in Texas where it's just at the beginning of its boom. So in the same year that some people we're paying way too much and getting no cash flow. You could you could do the opposite and buy high cash flow in an emerging market because back then Dallas was not what it is today. Yes. It was like people would think, why in the world would you go buy a property in Texas where there's nothing happening and there's, you know, property values don't go up and you know, you know, it's boring or whatever. Um, but what we what Robert Kiyosaki taught me was, no, 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 you got to look at the metrics. Where are the jobs going? Where's the population going? And are the properties in line with, the, you know, with, with uh, salaries? And California was 100% overvalued at that year. Texas was 27% undervalued. So oh, the indeed. people that would, you know, that listened to the show got it immediately, sold their California property, which you can do and not pay capital gain if you buy replacement property. Right. Within 45 days, identifying as a 1031 exchange. So 
they could exchange that basis, not pay the tax, uh, just defer it basically, and buy these high performing properties, brand new homes in this growth area of Dallas, where if you, if you did your homework, you could see that they were building an, a new freeway that they call Headquarter Row. There's now like 10,000 headquarters have moved there because the city of Dallas decided about 20 years ago, you know what? We're going to be the place businesses want to come and do business. We're going to make it super job friendly. I mean, super uh, employer friendly and low corporate taxes and no state income tax. Mm-hmm. So it worked. And, and now, you know, they're bustling with jobs. It's booming. But if you could see that happening, you could ride the wave. So this is really neat. So let me ask you, I I am just so amazed by this. Now, there are other methods, too, that you educate those, your clients on in really developing a good strategy on wealth and bringing in income. Mm -hmm. What is the best way for someone who wants to start their journey and get educated and, I mean, just garner so much of your knowledge and the things that you have to offer? Well, I'll start by saying, don't get your information from the news. Uh, You know, I was a news reporter for many, many years, and I know what the game is. You know, the the deal is you got to sell advertising and to sell advertising, you have to get eyeballs. And to get eyeballs, you have to have headlines that scare people, (laughs) you know, that's that's how it works. So, you know, don't listen to any of that and get real data. And the, the, the real data would be, hmm, who would I want to get my information from? How about somebody super successful, <laughs> right? Yeah. That, that was kind of the click for me. Oh, I'll just, I'll talk to people who have done this, done this well over an extended period of time. And that's who I'm going to get my information from. So uh, we have compiled a lot of that. We've interviewed people who have made millions in real estate, starting with nothing, and interview them on my podcast, The Real Wealth Show, and also at our website, Real Estate News, I mean, um, Real, The Real Wealth Network, and it's realwealthnetwork.com, and, and there's just a tremendous amount of information taught by people, real people, that's why we call it Real Wealth Network, learning from people who have done what you want to do, not from a reporter who doesn't own a piece of property, uh, get your information from someone who's built a portfolio using other people's money and is willing to teach you how to do that. So that that's the basis of what I do is let's learn from the giants. Let's learn from the experts and not the, not the people with the slick business suits that are selling programs that cost $20,000. No, 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 no. These are people who are happy to share their information because they're already successful. And then I wrote a book called retire with rich, retire rich with rentals which you could get on Amazon, which really breaks it down into uh, like a, ch- you know, a checklist, what you need to know. Because oftentimes I get people really excited about this and then they run out and buy the property next door and lose money and say, oh, she's a liar. Mm-hmm. That's because you can't do it that way. <laughs> you got to do it right. Yeah, there's, this, there's and, a process. You know, buying the right neighborhood. There's a process and it's amazing to me how many people will just get excited and then just go out and do it without knowing anything. Yeah. Well, I can understand that. I've done that. I'm, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> well, I think we all are. And then we learn yeah. from our mistakes. And it's not always yeah. in the same area, but the principle is the same. We really need to be, to really make the best use of our time, our money, and to grow, it's always to do our home, our homework first and know yeah. what the steps are to make an educated decision in whatever we do. And so if we don't have the tools and resources at our fingertips, we will fall into that and we will lose. And it affects our whole life. I mean, and our whole livelihood. So I really, I really admire what you're doing in providing education to people so that they can make educated decisions and they know which direction to go. And you've, you've layered it into a really full and well-rounded process so that people actually can learn and then put those steps in place and actually um, see change. And 
it is simple. You, I mean, you, you made a three point process from, the, from what we talked about at the beginning of the show. So in addition to just that, there's even more and they need to go and check out the things that you have to offer at your website and with your book. So I know we're limited on time. You've got a lot going. You're very busy. And I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to share this information with the audience, but you, Oh, thank you so much. And I really want to ensure that all of the, those that are listening and those that are watching, not only do they share it with the knowledge within themselves, but they get this out to their friends, family, everybody on social media. So if you will share your information again, the name of your book and how they can contact you so that we can get that information out to as many people as possible. Sure. Um, my book is Retire Rich with Rentals, and you can get that on Amazon. And then my website is realwealthnetwork.com, real like real estate, wealth like money, and network, which is what we've created is this network nationwide of, of people who will, will help you, people that have a track record. So I might say, yeah, or uh, the, the area between Tampa and Orlando is the fastest growing in the country. But then you're like, well, how do I take advantage of that? So yeah. we have teams there, property managers, people who find the pro properties. I, I just to, to simplify the process for you by uh, understanding what parts of Orlando, when I say that, like where specifically, where's the best cash flow, where's the rental demand, where are the jobs going, and who's the team that's going to help me. That set up for you because the last thing you want to do is just go on the internet and buy property and not know what to do. You need the, the management in place. You need to make yes. sure you have your inspections and appraisal. And is it close to where all, all those things go through the checklist. So realwealthnetwork.com is where you can go to get all that data and it's free. And so many people say, why would you do that? You could charge for it, but I know what it's like to be struggling and not know how you're going to uh, pay for your you know, your kids' college or your parents, your aging parents or your own aging process. You know, like that's scary because it, it the traditional ways don't work. When you really sit down and go, oh, okay, if I save ten percent and put it in a money market, I'll have to be a hundred and seventy before I have enough money. You know, it doesn't work. Yes, so there's got to be a faster way, and I, I and leverage is the way. Borrowing money to acquire a million dollar portfolio that cash flows that pays for itself and pays that loan back for you. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Plus tax benefits. I didn't even mention that you, you get, you yes. get to a point where you pay no tax from all of that. So there's just so many benefits and it's so mind blowing when you learn it. That's why I love to give it for free, but we're not, you know, we're not a nonprofit. So the way that we make money is we are, I'm a, a licensed real estate agent and we find properties nationwide. I'm like kind of a nationwide real estate agent with brokers across the country in our network that we trust that know how to find us really legitimate deals. And then we just make a broker to broker fee, a, a small yeah. portion of that normal fee. So, you know, I, we're getting paid. It's just our members at Real Wealth Network don't have to pay it. It's the brokers who pay us. That's really smart because it's a win-win for everybody involved. Yeah. And, and I like that because I, that's how I, I operate is how do I make it a win-win where mm -hmm. it's not, it's not, I just, I love this. So I'm really excited about, <laughs> I'm really excited about this and um, I will definitely continue to share your information uh, not just with today's broadcast, but in the future with other people uh, as well as uh, getting involved myself. So I'm really excited. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. As always, I really encourage you to share this with your friends, your family, your colleagues, with all of the people that you know on social media and those you don't. Thanks for tuning in. And with me today was Kathy Fetke, co-CEO of Real Wealth Network. Thank you. <laughs>